Yo, 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 what up, YouTube? It's me, Suxor. We are currently live on twitch.tv slash Suxor99. And today we got a little surprise. Got some keys. So we're going to be trying out the Graveyard Girls. I believe it's a Radalika game. These are easy platinum games, um, but I'm okay with that. And I just want to see what the story's about and get into the game. So let's do this. Art style, I, I'm, I'm digging. I like anime style art, so... So how's the family? Uh, what else you been playing? That's a nice picture. Right, options. Um, duh. just for simplicity, we'll do that. I uh, tried to get into quick mods, but uh, somehow I always end up back at Mario. <laughs> Dude, I used to play a ton of Quake back in the day, but um, I haven't played that in years, especially Quake One. Quick one first came out, it was it was the jam. Uh, a graveyard girls depicts the complicated and traumatic aftermath of losing a parent during a young adulthood. This topic has been addressed as authentically as possible. If you're struggling with grief, you may not uh, have a safe experience playing this game. This game is intended for mature audiences. Viewers discretion is advised. So there we go. Advice has been written or read out to you guys, so if this is not for you. I get it. Would you like to continue? Yes, I wish to continue. I wonder if you just hit no, you get a trophy. <laughs> the modding community is huge, right? I, I need to get into um, Link to the Past uh, randomizers way as well. <laughs> what up, J Dub? How you doing, buddy? Right. <laughs> No thanks, game. <laughs> I just booted this uh, by mistake. Let me just turn it off. <laughs> I get it. With today's uh, standards, you got to have all these uh, weird things and choices. So it's all good. <laughs> these are uh, choices in the game unlock scribbles. These are available in the memory section of the main menu after unlocking. Yeah. Gerudo's Exile. I haven't seen that hack yet. But yeah, they ALTTPs. Whoop whoop. Love them. I got my ROM stuff hooked, hooked up and got those uh, going. I just got to get into it. I got to remember playing the story more, but you got to play it a few times before getting into randomizations. So we'll see. I'll, I'll, I might start doing that when I'm on the road. All right, let's go. The leaves crunch below my feet as I may wake my way through the cemetery, counting each row that I pass. Ooh, trophy hype. Let's go, graveyard girl. A frigid gust of wind catches my hair and blows it into my vision. I tuck it away carefully. I can't help but remember how you used to tease me about finding my long hair everywhere. Ooh, this is pretty loud. Let me lower this a little bit. I think that's better. I had to lower it quite a bit. You'd always tell me how beautiful it was. Once I find this section I've been searching for, I let out a sigh, although it's not a relief. The cold stone inscription stares back at me, expressionless. Jason Gray, beloved husband and father. As I read the name quietly to myself, I feel like he's greeting me. In his own way. What am I supposed to say? Nothing seems quite right. So I settle on the simplest of phrases. I, I made it. I know it's been a while. In truth, it's been too long. The last time I visited, he didn't even have a headstone. I'm sorry. I should have come sooner. What am I thinking? Coming here isn't going to help. As if taking to a polished rock 
as if talking to a polish rock is going to bring any kind of closure. I turn to leave, but there is a magnetism in this place. As, I re as he'd reached for my hand and said, you're leaving already? I gazed back at the headstone and whispered to myself, you want me to stay? Fine. Um, I don't like being in a movie theater at home. <laughs> Uh, game devs are like, let's do the loudest possible sound and let people adjust it after <laughs> we blow their eardrums out, <laughs> right? And it's it's harder too because with um the way the mixer works and and so forth in uh, this for for streaming, it, it's like just all over the place. It's like crazy jumping, and it's just there's no action going on. My mom always insisted that I'd be careful not to stand on graves when visiting cemeteries, but that was out of respect for strangers. This is my dad's resting place. I sat on his lap a thousand times before. What would he care if I rested on his grave now? I know he wouldn't have minded. Without another moment of hesitation, I brushed away the leaves and sit back against his headstone. I lay my notebook across my thighs and settle into place. Yo, what up, Golden Freddy? How you doing, buddy? Happy Saturday. If I'm staying for a while, I'm getting comfy. Oh, trophy time. I bet it's been a minute. I glimpsed towards the late afternoon sun and paused to admire the golden glow of autumn. He loved this time of year. Well, I'm guessing not much has changed with you. He'd appreciate the sarcasm. Dark humor was his thing. Man, it sounds like me. <laughs> That's probably where you got it from. I'll just sit here and talk to myself like a crazy person. I take a deep breath in, but the crisp air won't soothe the ache in my lungs. I need to say something, anything. We, ding. Let's talk about mom. Yo, what up, Everlord? How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, Golden Freddy. Just uh, got this game. I uh, have some free codes. So I'm trying it out and just seeing what it's about. So I appreciate you being here. It's like story time for everyone. This game is really loud. I only have it on volume one, and it's like really loud on my side, too. Ooh, look at that guy. Oh, I don't have him. Let's, let's catch this dude. The Dragapult. So, I guess it's time for, uh, to tell you what's been going on. You might not love what I have to say next. You'll probably be angry. At least I think you would be. I'll try to keep it short. So, you died. And no one saw it coming. One day you were, you were gone. I don't think I've processed that yet, to be honest. Mom couldn't handle the pain, so she shut down. I guess that was her coping mechanism. She spent months crying over you. She barely slept or ate. I didn't expect this to be easy, but I thought I'd still have my mom to lean on. I convinced myself that I was lucky to have her, regardless of how she was handling it. That's what I kept telling myself on the worst days. We weren't alone either. People tried to support her. Aunt, Cor Aunt Cora wanted her to visit a therapist, but mom locked the doors and ignored her phone. I tried to talk to her too, but it was like she couldn't hear me. She was a shell of a person shutting down everything and everyone out. I thought she needed time. You're streaming earlier than usual for the stream when I'm in bed. Yeah, I, uh, I got these keys, so I wanted to just uh, get the stream going uh, to show a thank you to them. So try to drag it, try to drag it down the volume mixer on your PC itself. Yeah, let me let me pull it down. Is it still a little loud? There we go. I'm at negative 21 BC numbers now. So hopefully that helps. It's kind of weird. It's like dipping low, and then it goes high, dip low, go high. I don't know where to get these volumes. So hopefully that helps. I appreciate I apologize. One morning, she packed her clothes and bought a plane ticket. There was no warning. 
she said she'd be back in two weeks and then she needed a vacation. Dear diary. Mom left and it sucks to say, but I knew she wouldn't come back. I've seen her a handful of times since. One of those times was to sell the house that you built. I still drive past it. I like to pretend that you'll be waiting on the porch, having a cigarette or watering the plants. It's soothing in a strange way, like opening my favorite chapter in an old book, pretending I don't know the ending. I pause to catch my breath. Mom's in an apartment on the other side of the country with her new boyfriend, but I stay here. She helped with my tuition and rent, but she's gone. Honestly, if you saw her today, you wouldn't recognize her. I feel like I never really knew her. She left me behind, and I think it's because I remind her of you. There's a hole in my heart where my mom used to be, and I hated her. Part of me still does. I think it <laughs> would be easier if she disappeared. Isn't that horrible? Fuck me. Saying it is worse than feeling it quietly. Daddy, I spent so much time hating her. She took up all the space I had left in my heart. But the worst part of it all, and the worst part of all is, it's that I think I forget to deal with losing you. That's why I'm here today. Because in person, I need to talk to the most in the world is a part of my this world. I look skyward as I blink back welling tears. Aunt Cora used to tell me to think of you smiling down on me. I keep thinking how sweet she is to say that, but when I picture you, you're looking up. I know it sounds dark, but seriously, what's left of you is six feet below me. Cora wanted me to remember you in a happy way, I get that. I'm just too literal. She, she sounds like me, and I sound like him, which is kind of scary. I hope that's going to be my daughter and how she thinks. <laughs> I search for what to say next. I wonder what he'd say if he were here. The truth is, I don't know what you'd feel. I didn't get a chance to know you better. Cora's word echoes in my mind. Dad's smile. What was your smile like anyways? And why didn't I try harder to preserve it in the first place? A frustration that I can't swallow begins to form in my throat. I stay silent, afraid of my voice will break and the rest of me will follow. I do my best to reanimate my dad's grin in my mind's eye, but there's nothing. St <laughs> a stray leaf dances in front of me before heading west with the wind. I push away the distraction and close my eyes, forcing it myself to focus on his lost expressions. I try to revisit each part of him. His amber eyes, his perfect straight nose, the way his eyebrows furrowed. When I ask him too many questions, slowly, I could piece him together, but he wouldn't assemble. Even his voice was a doling whisper. Why couldn't I remember how he spoke? One exact phrase plucked from my memory would be enough to hear him, but those words remain unspoken. Couldn't re even remember how the he sounded when he said, I love you. Man, that's pretty dark. A familiar pain begins to crawl in my chest, one I buried under a mountain of pills early this morning. No, 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 not now. I inhale a raged breath and shove the shadows away. It's something I've practiced for a while now. Keep talking, distract yourself. You know, it's good that I visited before the snow when you're uh, nearly here. You might not realize it, but today is your favorite holiday. It's also the day you died. Four years ago. Maybe you knew that part, though. He suffered long enough to know that he was going to die, I think. That was a detail that made me vomit when they told me about his accident. He was awake when the ambulance arrived. Why wasn't it faster? In my constant re-imagings, he'd always be unconscious. I couldn't bring myself to picture any details. I didn't want to remember how he suffered, but it was part of his story. It was part of his life. His suffering and his vices had even drifted into the dreams lately. Ugh, it's rough. The anniversary always amplified them. I tried smoking and drinking just to see 
what you thought was so great about it. I must have got the jeans from you because they're my favorite crutch now. I don't know why you tortured yourself with them. At least I have my reasons. But I did know. My mom stopped hiding their broken marriage once this casket was closed. I knew things were rough, but I didn't realize how destructive they were. Lately, I started to question if my mother was the true monster in this life. It's funny, I spent so much time asking myself why you tortured yourself with shitty choices when I mirror them daily. And that's why I'm here too, because I'm your daughter. I came here to suffer, not to heal. This pain doesn't mend like a paper cut, Dad. It festers like a gunshot. I'm so frustrated now, I know my mom is. She's shown the world her true colors. You deserved better. Why can't I picture her so perfectly? It's not fair. I bit my lip and pushed my mother's face from my memory. This isn't about her. Don't let her steal this moment. Anyway. I've been writing quite a lot, actually. Almost daily. It's therapeutic, I think. Getting my feelings on paper helped me feel detached from them. They're a little less heavy when I read them aloud. When I write, I can push the darkest thoughts I'm having away, even momentarily. The best part is I'm not afraid that someone's listening and analyzing. I feel safer than the grief counseling I attended. I don't think that the professionals were judging me, but when they listened, I felt them processing my words and misunderstanding. Just because I write dark things doesn't mean I'm a dark person. I'm reaching for bigger thoughts and feeling when I let those words go. My new therapist understands. She's different than the others. I finally feel important that I can go to my appointments. I don't look forward to them because they're a lot. But when I leave, I feel lighter. Like I've lessened the loads on my shoulders. I get scared sometimes because each day is a wild card. I hate feeling that everything is out of my control. I'm terrified that the therapy can't save me. I don't want to bottle things up again. Holding that shit in was the worst idea I've ever had. Fuck it. Dad, I'm done pretending. I drink. I smoke. I pop some pills before I left the house. I'll do anything to be numb. And I'm afraid that scribbling my feelings isn't enough. Oof. I thought the pain was dulling, but it's worse than the day he died. I know you're not here today, but I keep picturing you in every tomorrow. And each day, the image grows a little dimmer. Oh, boys. Whoa. And they were right on that warning. <laughs> I was, this is going to hit different. Uh, ooh. I can feel it. Like, it's in my head. <laughs> Between losing you and mom taking off, I've been trying so hard to feel empty. Being happy felt so out of reach, so feeling less became the best option. Turns out being destructive couldn't save me. Trophy hype? The mountain. You can't hear drowning girls cry. I wipe away the overflowing streams of tears with my sleeves and shut my eyes. Practice those deep breaths. It's okay to be upset. I inhale. I exhale. But the breasts are intruding on. The earth sways below as a sensation of floating overcomes me, almost like sitting on a boat. Uh-oh. Why doesn't it feel like the word's drifting? It's probably those stupid allergy pills. The twigs of concern washed over me as I tried to imagine the state of my liver. But I excused the thought quickly. It's not like I eat vegetables or drink enough water anyways. Coffee, bread, and cheese are my food groups. Oh my god, it literally sounds like me. <laughs> I was numb to take more pills before. I was dumb. <laughs> numb. I was dumb to take more pills before leaving. I know it's a bad day when they can't keep me from crying. I try to focus on the positives. At least I was doing better. Take them as prescribed was a challenge, but it, I managed to for quite a while. Today was a hiccup. They're usually a subtle but helpful bandage. I'm an idiot for thinking they'd handle this visit. Subs will cannot uh, cover this. How could I ever expect this visit to be easy? 
It was naive of me. Today was always going to fucking sting. The words I've whispered under my breath a thousand times echoes, but once again, you've never, you're never going to be okay. I sit with those words. You're never going to be okay. Never. Ever. Again. I tell myself that I needed to get those words out of my system, but I know they're bound to sit on the tip of my tongue again, wait to, waiting to escape. With my eyes still shut, I sign and let my thoughts drift with the vertigo. Maybe those pills weren't so useless. A chilling gust lifts, fluttering leaves away from the earth, and I can hear the dancing through the air. I begin to imagine that I'm flying with Pete with him, twirling away from this place, away from my body. Hello, a voice. I must have imagined it. Are you okay? What the? I opened my eyes and stumbled upwards in a, ga in a daze. I hurried, <clears throat> hurriedly dusted my clothes before looking towards the stranger behind the question. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I taken aback by her presence. I didn't expect to see anyone here. No, it's fine. You didn't scare me. My throbbing heart tells a different story. I suddenly feel thankful that I'm not the blushing type. Are, are you alright? I'm fine, why? Oh. Pokemon in chat? Roselia? Good luck, good luck. She gestures towards my dad's headstone and suddenly raises her eyebrows. I think you were sleeping on someone's grave. Did, uh, you, um, know them? I laughed half-heartedly. That's my dad. He wouldn't mind. Oh. The girl's posture stiffened noticeably, and I remind myself to tone back at the abruptness. You're not talking to the ghost anymore. Act normal. <laughs> yeah, no ghost here. Uh, ask why she's here. I'll ask her name. I'll be polite. Um, what's your name? I'm Lucia. And you are? I quickly realized that I should have introduced myself first. It would have been the polite thing to do. Why do I always feel so disjointed when I meet new people? It's embarrassing. My name's Ellie. It's nice to meet you. That sounded more robotic than genuine, but at least I'm trying. So, Ellie. Do you mind if I ask uh, why you're napping in a cemetery? Well, it wasn't on the agenda. I took allergy medicine and it hit a little harder than I anticipated. Oof, I've been there. What are you allergic to? I scrambled to come with a good excuse. Uh, not too sure. I had some highs and figured it was the best to take a pill. Or four. You get it, sometimes cat make my eyes itchy. I, um, I pet them anyways. They're totally worth it. Can't help but smile back at Lucia. She seems sweet. So you were visiting someone too? Lucia's smile falters. Nice job. You're always good at brightening the uh, room. Yes, my sister passed away. Her name was Kate. She died last week. I can't help but regurgitate the sentence that everyone had spoken to me in the past. I'm sorry. Lucia shifts her feet uncomfortably and stares at the ground. I remember standing like that too, unsure how to respond. Uh, sorry, that wasn't the right thing to say. I don't mind. It's what everyone says. I know. I've been there. My, diet, my dad died four years ago, so the memories are still pretty fresh. Lucia's eyes widen fearfully. They are. I struggle to backtrack, jumping to console her as best as I can. Not in the same way that you're feeling. I mean, that it's his anniversary day, so it feels closer than usual. 
Lucia's shoulders drop slightly as her gaze softens. That's understandable. I get it now. I'll be visiting on Kate's day, too. Does visiting get easier? A Molotov mixture of disgust and embarrassment builds in my chest. What am I supposed to say? Oh. What do we do? Ah, uh, we'll lie to her. I decided I shouldn't have dumped the experience on her. There's enough going on right now. I don't need to freak her out about dealing with uh, complicated grief. I think so. It depends on how often you come here. If you're visiting on an emotional day, it's going to be more difficult. I try to visit on normal days if I were you. Drop in or whatever. That's smart. Thanks for the advice. I guess today is technically one of those normal days. Halloween wasn't super special to Kate. Lucia looks towards her father's headstone. Those are beautiful flowers. I like the arrangement you chose. I bite my lip unconsciously. Thanks. But I didn't leave those. I think my sister was here earlier. Cora is big on flowers. Oh, well, she has good taste. Sorry to focus on the flowers. I can't help myself. I'm a florist. Oh, that's interesting. An anxious, uh, anxious realization that I've never thought to bring my dad's flowers hit me. I never even crossed my mind. Does Lucia think it's rude that I did it? Maybe you could suggest a bouquet for my flower or a bouquet for my dad. I should have brought one. Hey, it's not your thing. Don't feel like you have to buy them. Lucia smiley, smiles carefully as she reads me like an open book. I do have an idea though. If you want to leave something meaningful, please, I'd love to. I expect not uh, to mean that, but for some reason I want to. Wait here, please. I nod at Lucia, walks past me. I flip through the notes instead of staring after her, doing my best not to act so entranced. Where did this girl come from? She's so sweet. The crunch of fallen leaves under footsteps carries from the distance. Lucia stands closer than before. I brought you this. She reaches into her bag and extends her hand. A single icy blue rose sits between her thumb and forefinger. I reach forward, but stop to hesitate. Lucia's gift. Where did you get it? It was left at Kate's grave. I grasp to escape my lips and I shake my head. Can't take that. No, don't worry. Kate will want your father to have a flower. He doesn't like roses anyways. Lucia trails off, realizing what she said. I mean, didn't. Kate didn't like roses. I try my best to reassure her with my gaze as I accept the rose. Thank you. The present tense thing goes away. Don't feel like you need to jump to correct yourself. I will take care of it. Lucia nods silently in response. As I kneel against the cold earth to place the blue rose on my dad's grave, I realize how fresh the flower is. The edges of the petals were barely begun to wilt. I feel Lucia's eyes on my back. Before turning towards her, I asked a question on my mind. Lucia? Hmm? When was Kate's funeral? Yesterday. As I faced Lucia, I wanted to ask her why she's here today. I want to know how she's doing. I want to hug her. I want to make her feel less alone, even if I was a fraction of a second. I want to give her what I never had. A moment of silence passes us. Before I ask Lucia to let me in, she breaks the silence herself. Are you still tired? A message <clears throat> massaged the back of my neck um, absentmindedly and laugh a little. Yeah. The dark circles give it away? Lucia giggles softly. No, your eyes are fine. I was kind of <clears throat> heard to lie about it. I looked into the mirror before. I can't believe I fell asleep. A little embarrassing. Don't worry about it. You drink coffee? Yes. Let me buy you one. I don't want to sleep through Halloween. There's a great coffee shop in the Old Town District. Old Town? Isn't that a little far? Drive here? No, I walked. Well, I don't mind giving you a ride. Let me take you. It's my treat. Unless you have other plans. I don't, but... 
Part of me remains hesitant. Getting into cars with strangers isn't something my parents encourage. That's for sure. She seems hardless enough, but I don't actually know her. Plus, today is not exactly an easy day for me. Lucia quietly reads my rigid stance without explanation. She grins and started to giggle at me. What did you want to take a selfie together? What? You can send it to a friend. That way, if you go missing, they know exactly who to look for. I smile back at her and suddenly shake my head. <laughs> That's fine. I stick out my thumb in a hitchhiker's fashion. I love the thrill of getting into strangers' cars. Lucia playful rolls her eyes before winking at me. Buckle up then, we're going for a ride. I'm gonna take a screenshot for the, uh, maybe use that. Or my what's what call it thumbnails but we'll see no big deal we head towards the road walking past rosa headstone side by side Ooh, unexpected trophy let's go didn't imagine i'd be leaving her here with someone the feeling of walking close to her is strange and comforting i guess i always expected to be here alone even if I had a special person in my life, I wouldn't ask them to come here. It's hard to understand what it's like to visit this place unless you're missing someone. I uh, might get a new Mario Pop Pro controller. I know I already have one, uh, but I don't know if I find a way to fix the stuck X button. Oh, that's easy. X buttons are easy. Those are just mechanically. It means something causing it to stick. You'd have to open it up. Just clean around it and the pad underneath. The drive to the coffee shop is uneventful. Lucia's car has heated seats. So I try my best to subtly warm my hands under my legs. She doesn't seem to notice and stays focused on driving. We chat about the weather mostly. Once we've reached the Old Town District, Lucia carefully navigates towards the last parking spot on the street. This is perfect. I haven't been here in forever. Coffee date. After stepping out of the car, Lucia tugs gently on my sweater and guides me to the crosswalk. She's practically bouncing towards the coffee. Once we cross, we find ourselves at the front doors. Despite the chilly weather, they still offer outdoor seating. The waitress steps outside to greet us with a smile on her face. Welcome. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll be right with you. As the waitress steps inside, I move to follow her. Lucia pulls my sleeve again with, out, <laughs> with an expectant grin. <laughs> Let's sit out here. It's more private. As we take our seats outside the cafe, I can feel an energy of the cemetery fall away. Our tub is vibrantly decorated in Halloween themed trinkets and candles. This is cute. Can't argue with that. She definitely chose a festive spot. The street is bustling with ghouls and witches. Even our waitress is dressed up. Happy Halloween. Can I interest you in one of our spooky specials? Lucia's eyes light up immediately. Ooh, what are they? Waitress grin realized she'd hook Lucia in. Today we have our pumpkin cheesecake paired with any of our fall specialty drinks for $8.99. If you're craving something warm and heartly, we have uh, butternut squash soup with one of our fresh baked biscuits. Ooh, Lucia squeals with delight. I love cheesecake. Dude, I love cheesecake too. I like pumpkin spice cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Could I get a pumpkin uh, cheesecake with a pumpkin spice latte, please? I guess she likes pumpkins. After jolting down Lucia's order, the waitress gaze darts towards me. What would you like? A pumpkin cheesecake sounds satisfying. And a drink? I rack my brain for anything other than pumpkin spice latte. Sorry. What are the other fall drinks? Maple pecan, chai lattes. We should raise her eyebrow and whisper <clears throat> across with the table. The maple pecan sounds seems super yummy. I can't help but chuckle. Okay, I'll get the maple pecan latte. The waitress nods and leaves with a smile.
Barely a minute passes before the waitress rushes back to the table. Here are your lattes. Milk and spice. Here we go. Trophy hype. Thank you so much. I'll bring the cheesecake soon. Um, over as soon as I it's ready. So she appears over at me with a curious glimmer in her eyes. Do you think it's too hot to sip? I'm sure it's fine. I lift the cup into my lips and decide to take a swig. Yikes. My throat burns as I try to desperately to clear the inconspicuousies. <clears throat> I do my best not to sputter on Lucia as I reply. Oh, God, it's warm still. She giggles softly. You didn't need to be a lab rat. Just trying to be helpful. Lucia raises her cup and takes a careful sip. It's not that hot. Were you trying to scare me? Well, it's Halloween. How did she not uh, scold herself? She doesn't have no sense of temperature. Maybe that's why she chose outdoor seating on this chilly day. Do you like to celebrate Halloween? I falter, unsure of how to explain myself. I used to. Lucia realized what she's asked. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot that today is. No apologies necessary. I try my best to steer uh, the conversation with a lighter tone in my voice. I do like Halloween, by the way. I just haven't done much other than hand out candy for years. The kids in my neighborhood love my place. They know I always hand out tons of treats. <laughs> you only hand out candy? Uh, you haven't dressed up? No, but I did like the part when I was in high school. Great. I'm going to a costume party tonight. What do you think? Spooky or sexy? Huh? What kind of costume should I go with? I have a closet full of options. Uh, looks like we're going with spooky. Spooky is classic. She grins with an almost uh, fiendish quality. I like how you think. Maybe I'll dress up as a witch. I can see her pulling off that look. Her hair is perfect with a witch's costume. You could go for a real mystical vibe. Ooh, a woobat in chat. Good luck, good luck. You think so? Absolutely. Well, would you let me tell you your, favorite, your fortune then? I shrug casually. Sure, I'd love to get some insight. Lucia reaches over and takes my hand in her. She studies it carefully, squinting with exaggerated focus. Hmm. Evening. There are stars in the night sky. I see you're headed towards the house. She closes her eyes and yanked at my arm even harder. I nearly fall across the table. Hey, be careful. There's a crowd swirling capes and vibrant dresses. Oh, drinks and candies are being passed around. A colorful lit room. You'll arrive there very soon. I will. Lucia releases her hand from her grip and opens her eyes. So, did you want to come with me to a party? I was going to go alone. Oh, it just went by itself. Just your words drift away from me. My limbs stiffen as I suddenly been plunged into an icy water. Party on Halloween. That night. He went out after that night. I was one that called him. I bit my cheek desperately to escape the coursing rivers of guilt. No. No freaking, no freaking out. Not now. I dig my nails into my palm, trying to snap myself away from the echoes of the Halloween party. Okay, focus and breathe. The idea of rejecting Lucia hurts, but I can't go with her. The voice of my therapist saying, I'm a trigger, rings in my ear. I promised that I'd stop being self-destructive and can't risk Lucia see me like that. I can't. Not tonight, at least. The ghost of the distant night disappears as quickly as it arrived. I'm at the cafe with Lucia. I'm okay. Lucia's grip uh, grips the handle of her mug and spins it absentmindedly. I thought you didn't have plans. I have a date later. Sorry that I didn't mention. A frown escapes Lucia. A date? I nod. Yep, with a bowl of leftover candy. Oh, leftovers. Oh. Relief washes over her. If it isn't obvious already... I'm painfully single. Yo, what up, Bob? How you doing? Another stream playing a Doki Doki game. Feels bad. <laughs> I got some uh, free keys, so we're going through this game. 
Um, this this story, man, it's it's pretty it's pretty dark. It, it hits home, that's for sure. It's not obvious, really. Grr, damn ad, stupid ads. We need some. Really? Of course it isn't. You're so pretty. For a second, my heart skips a beat. Wow. I realize how rude I might be coming off. I mean, thanks. We break eye candy uh, to struggle to, and struggle to continue. That's one way to snap back into reality. Come on, keep it up. So, what's it like being a florist? My ploy to redirect the conversation is painfully evident. Lucia doesn't brush me off, luckily. My family has owned a flower shop for three generations, so it's pretty natural for me. Yo, yo, yo. I'm pretty good, man. How are you doing, Bob? Thank you for being here. Yeah, another another Doki Doki game. Uh, I got these keys for free, so I'm just uh, streaming it and uh, enjoying it. And so far, the story is pretty hitting. It's about a girl who lost her father on Halloween, and she was at her grave visiting her dad because she hasn't been doing it recently. And she told him how much she hated her mother and that she didn't realize how bad she was until after he passed away. And now uh, she met this girl at the cemetery. Her sister just died and now they're having uh, coffee. Yeah, pretty good. Another stream I watched playing a Doki Doki Literature Club yesterday. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I have some other games too. So once we beat this one, uh, we'll get into um, a fighting game or maybe that'll be tonight. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet. I don't know how long this game is. And then there's a PS5 version, which will do the quick way of getting a platinum for that. What about you? Are you a student? No, I graduated from a tourism and hospitality program. What games, you play? What games are you playing, Bob? I work at a Spring Dream Suites. Oh, that sounds interesting. Eh, it's really not. My job is to fend off bad reviews, basically. Lucia laughs, but I'm afraid to force it. Do you like to travel? I haven't really traveled since I was a kid. But if I ever had a chance, I'd love to work at a resort. Just to see what it's like to live in a warm climate. Count me in. I'm always down to book a room uh, at an island resort. I promise I'll leave a good review too. If you don't, <laughs> if you get me a discount. I can't help but giggle. I'll do my best. I'm curious about your job. When did you uh, join your family's business? They started training me when I was young. I'm doing good, been uh, pal worlding it up lately. Uh, glad to hear you're doing good too. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I got pal world on my Steam Deck. I haven't been able to actually play it more than one time on that. But man, I love pal worlds. I think that's a great game. I'm not into survivals, but pal worlds is pretty, pretty, pretty dope. <laughs> they did a great job. I spent plenty of summers playing in my grandmother's garden. She started the business with her grandfather. It's beautiful. They have a huge property out there on the countryside. I love putting together bouquets for my mom when I was little. My grandpa would help me pick them, but they always turned out perfect. He called it my training. The plan worked though. I'm running the business with my parents now. My grandparents are retired, but they still help out when we're shorthanded. Uh, yeah, if, you, if I played all uh, my games like this, I'd be playing forever. So many keys from those bundle things over the years I've never touched. Dude, I know, especially Steam games. Freak, man. I, I, I have way too many. <laughs> Definitely way too many. Lucia gaze seems to incentivize. It feels like she's looking right through me. Is she right? But I think for my Steam count, um, I'm close to six or seven hundred. I think it's seven hundred. Seven hundred games, and I played like ten of those on Steam. <laughs> but I'm gonna head to lurk mode, not to disturb uh, you during your playthrough. <laughs> Sounds good, brother. I appreciate the lurk. Um, but no, you're never bothering me. <laughs> Trust me, I love talking and interacting. Game can always wait. She notices my concern and smiles reassuringly. Sorry, I was thinking about those summers as a kid. I can still picture the day my sister made flower crown out of daisies. She put it on my head and called me a princess. It was just a game to Kate, but... It clears her throat. 
That was the day I fell in love with flowers. I'll never forget it. Lucia. That was an uh that was a vulnerable moment. Her hands trembled ever so lightly. She must have been nervous to share that memory with me. That's so special. Hello, ladies. Here's your pumpkin cheesecake. Before I can finish, our waitress interrupts. We wait for her to set down our plate, saying, Coultry, uh, can I get you anything else? I think we're good, thanks. The waitress steps away and heads inside. I fiddle with my notebook and flip through the pages while Lucia sips her drink. Ellie, can I ask you a question? Smile, eager to start chatting again. Go ahead. Lucia motions towards the table. What's that? Oh, that's my notebook. Like a, di a diary? Sort of. Um, it has a bit of everything. Unfinished thoughts, sketches, some journaling. Don't usually carry it around. You brought it for your dad. Maybe it was obvious or maybe she understands me. Yeah, I did. I thought about reading it to him, but I felt weird once I got there. I talked to him instead, which wasn't much easier. I think I know how you feel. I tried talking to Kate today, but I couldn't. I left her voicemails instead. I felt closer to know things were almost normal. It's so so, but Lucia's voice breaks as she trails off. Instinctively, I reach across the table. For a fraction of a second, my hand rests on top of her own. I pull away swiftly, fearing that I evaded her space. Sorry. She stared at her lap, unmoving. Thank you. That was nice. For a moment, I envisioned a horrible pers uh, issue of hovering over the edge of unfiltered processing, raw grief. One day, she's going to realize there was infinite possibilities of this universe. She will never see her sister again. The realization that there will never be another moment shared with Kate. The end of making memories and the beginning of their blurring seems clear, but it never is. Ellie? Yeah? Lucia bites her lip and stares into her cup. I have a question that I'm afraid to ask anyone else. I don't want to be weird or rude, but it seems you understand loss better than anyone I've spoken to. I struggle to give her a good answer. What if I make her feel worse? Decide to warn her. Honestly, I'm not the best person to uh, get grief counseling from. I need someone to be real with me. Tired of being brushed off. Suddenly, a circle of chairs in the church basements revisits me. I felt brushed off too. It was so discouraging. All right. What do people say to you? I heard that the stages can take years. But the pain won't last forever. Is it true? The stages? Honestly, I forgot how much people like to focus on that idea. My grief was in the stages, at least. Not in the way I expected. She gives me a quizzical uh, stare through glassy eyes. Emotions aren't dominoes. They don't fall in, in logical patterns. My grief falls like sudden rain on a cloudless day. I can wake up in acceptance and go to bed angry or bargaining. Lucia's eyes brighten. That uh, was poetic. I ignore her phrase. Praise. Look, I know that your sister is always on your mind right now, but there's going to be a day where you forget about Kate for longer than you ever thought possible. I forgot about my dad all the time. Lucia seems started by the at my mission. There are moments when his memories doesn't stir any pain or tears. Because you're healing? No. I feel ashamed or angry, even dull at times. I always feel wrong. You'll probably be disgusted with yourself or pulling it together and burning how deeply you miss her. I felt punished for trying to function, going to work, visiting friends, even getting dressed. Putting away the pain is harder than carrying it. I just wanted you to know that. There's no winning. There's no easy way to process this loss. She blinks carefully, intentionally, as if she's truly absorbing the information. You know... Lucia stops to clear her throat before continuing. I didn't plan to go back to Kate's grave today. You didn't? No. I was driving around mindlessly, and it sort of dawned on me that wandering in a daze was disrespectful to her memory. She would have done anything for a clear moment. I'm not sure that I follow. I don't want to uh, demand answers, but I can't nod and 
pretend it makes sense like the grief group did. I'm not here to tell you. Tell her that she's young and it'll make it easier. That was wrong of them. <clears throat> Anecdotes and adages aren't solutions. I want to listen and do my best to understand her. But Lucia doesn't move to explain herself. If you're really not ready to tell, no, it's fine. Sorry, I needed a moment. And not a wait for her to gather her thoughts. She takes a deep breath and begins. Kate suffered from chronic health problems and taught me what a privileged and pain-free day is. She tried her best to live a normal life, but her health had a habit of stealing happy moments from her. One morning, Kate didn't get up for breakfast. My mom went upstairs to check on her. They had plans to go shopping, so it was odd that she hadn't started getting ready. When my mom walked in, Kate wouldn't wake up. She was taking prescription drugs for her illness, and she aspirated in her sleep. It was sudden. She died all alone. And now I'm here, one week later, enjoying a pumpkin spice latte while my sister uh, starts to rot in the ground. My heart shudders as she speaks the words, rot. So yeah, I get what you mean. There are no right choices. Every moment without her feels wrong. I feel like a stranger in my own life. I never say anything like that, especially to someone I just met, but I spoke without hesitating. And now I'm regretting every word. I'm afraid you think I'm a freak. No. It's horrible, but everything you said makes perfect sense. I don't want to tell her anything else. I don't want her to know that my heart doesn't feel like it did before. Ooh. We go to Roserad in chat. It's an evolved form of Roselia. Let's go, let's go. Good luck, good luck. Lucia gives me a look that cuts deep. This girl is staring into my eyes, looking for hope. I reach out and squeeze her hand, but the comfort is forced. I don't know how to tell her that I'm broken too. She doesn't deserve the whiplash of false hope. I don't want to see her bite that apple. I don't want to watch it turn to bitter ash on her tongue. I pull my hand away and break the silence. Can I put your number in my phone? Lucia strains her process and reaches for her bag. Sure. She unlocks her phones and hands it over. I carefully type my information into the new contact menu, making sure I leave no mistakes. I know it's a uh, it's cliche, but you can call me anytime. I don't care why either. It doesn't have to be an emergency. She nods as she stashes her cell phone back into her bag. Thank you. I still have questions, if you're willing. I feel an ascetic hesitation burning in my throat. I'm not sure if I'm the person you should be around right now. I think you're wrong. I think I don't think I am. I tried to uh, talk to other people dealing with loss and it didn't help. Sometimes I wonder if the opposite would have been better. Maybe you need to surround yourself with people who don't get it. How would that help? Maybe I'll convince your, uh, maybe it'll convince yourself that you're just like them. Fake it till you make it, but the grief counseling version. Look, I get it if you don't want to talk about grief. But I don't need kid gloves. He points to my lap. I want to hear the Ellie that's in that notebook. I know you've already let me listen to her when poetry, grief that falls like sudden rain on the cloudless day. I bet $20 that's been written in there. As much as I wouldn't mind paying for the meal, I won't bet against her. I know she's right and she knows it. I push aside my uncertainties. It's not like you have to see her again. If your answer freaks her out, it was her choice to insist on them. But I find myself imagining her in my future, where she sees fit, I'm not sure. But I'm certain that I want to see her again. Okay, I'll bite. Finally. First, you have to make me a promise. What kind of promise? Where we, uh, when we go our separate ways, you have to text me after. Even if to say bye forever. Okay. I promise that I'll text you. I wink at Lucy playfully. Ask me anything. I'm an open book. She grins at the notebook pun. Okay, let's start weird. Was your dad's service an open casket? Yep. Did he look himself? They never do. I hadn't seen a body before Kate's service. 
I don't know what I expect a dead person to look like, but it wasn't that. Looking at her made me feel sick. Or maybe it was afraid. I couldn't believe it was her. She looked like a doll. Like a weird imitation of Kate. Even when I wasn't staring at her, I knew exactly where she was. I couldn't hear my mind away. I couldn't tear my mind away from that image. She definitely didn't look like she was sleeping. She looked dead. I could barely focus on the surface. She was all I saw. It's awful, but I can't remember what anyone said to me that day. The eulogies are a blur. I pursed my lips. How did no one notice how she felt about seeing her dead sister? Why didn't anyone help her? I'm sorry but nobody warned you before the funeral. I'm sorry that no one saw what you were dealing with during that either. You need support and you deserve it. Thanks. Having a view isn't right for everyone. Please don't worry. It's okay to be freaked out. You're not the first to feel that way. Trust me. There's a term for it. Seriously? Yeah, it's called Uncanny Valley. When you look at someone you've seen animated with life and see them emptiness, the absolute absence of energy is different for everyone, but you're not going to like it. I'm sorry you saw Kate that way. You deserve your option not to. Lucia frowned sharp, sharply. You're right. No one asked if I wanted to wanted an open casket. My parents did all the planning. I just showed up. My mom did it. The opposite. She dragged me to every moment of the planning. Choosing dad's casket. It burned into my memory. There's no winning when you don't get a choice. We both deserve to make our own decisions. Lucia nods as her expression softens. After the funeral, I kept pulling a photo of Kate out of my wallet. I couldn't help but stare and cry. I was doing it whatever I could to remember her the way she was instead of the shell I saw to her today. I like to think that focusing on her smile helped. She sits back in her chair and motions towards her bag. What would you like to see? It? Yes. Sure. Lucia carefully places a small photograph on the table between us. I sit forward and peer down, bracing myself. Instantly, I feel my heart shudder at a rhythm as I take in the smiling image of a girl my own age. She was so young. I look back at Lucia and try to keep my response simple. There's Kate. Your sister had a beautiful smile. She nods in agreement. I took that photo when we were gardening together last summer. Weeding my grandma's garden was always a pain, but Kate did her best to make me laugh whenever she could. She spent more time gathering a bouquet, a bouquet than actually pulling weeds. I didn't mind, though. Chores weren't so bad when she was around to help. I think Kate smiled every day of her life. I'll miss that the most. She was a bright light. That's always, that's why I always wanted to be <clears throat> like my bigger sister. Lucia reaches over and takes a photo, tucking it away carefully in her wallet. Ellie, please don't feel pressure. I get it if you can't share anymore. I know that I'm not entitled to your pain or experiences, but I'd be lying if I say that I didn't want to hear them. Can I ask you another question? Yes. Go for it. Lucia's uh, lips quiver as her amber eyes betray a silver, a sliver of anxiety. You're sure? Ooh, last night. Please, I want to help. She swallowed up audibly. Do you feel like he's watching you? The old weight descends and perches on my shoulder. The hovering of fam familiar eyes, a specter I thought I'd left in the past. I shrug it away with a practiced breath. In the first few weeks after he died, yeah, quite often. It goes away fast, I think. You don't remember? I can't tell you how I yelled at nothingness in the days before Dad's funeral. I ordered him away from my own, uh, from my own comfort. I didn't want him to visit either. I needed to live without his ghostly gaze. That stays between us. Simplicity is best. It goes away. Or you just decide that you don't care. 
what they see. A hint of blush touches her cheek. It better go away. Felt weird showering today. I couldn't stop picturing her standing on the other side of the curtain, waiting. It's eerie. I feel like I'm going crazy. I promise you're not going crazy. I've been there. How did you do it? What? Cope. How did you cope? That's an impossible question. Ugh. Keep going. Honestly, that's an answer I'm still searching for. You must have tried something. Oh, Alicia, I tried plenty. I decided to turn the question back towards her. What have you tried in the first week? My hair, I guess. It wasn't this color last week. I had an appointment before Kate died. She booked it for me. I couldn't bring myself to cancel it, so I went uh, to her funeral like this. There's a hint of regret in her voice. There's nothing wrong with fashion colors. Maybe from your perspective. I thought it would uh, make me happy, but it didn't work. I remember when I felt that way too. But I thought that a haircut or a tattoo could spill um, some color into the gray haze. I regret not rescheduling at least. My cousin implied that I was trying to steal Kate's spotlight. Some of Kate's friends did too. Spotlight? What a poor choice of words. That wasn't fair of them to say. But it was. I did that when she was alive. She's... Kate's my best friend and worst enemy. I got so jealous of her constantly. The worst part? Kate knew it. And she always did her best to reassure me that it was pretty and were popular too. It didn't matter what was bothering me. She would zero in on it and try to fix things. Kate would could uh, be too kind. It was disarmingly, disarming and infuriating. And as much as she bugged me, I, I would do anything to get her that back. I want her to make it better. I just, I need to know what to do with all of this. I'm overflowing with feelings towards her and there's no resolution. I can't work it out with her. Every chance slipped away in an instant. There's no outlet for the ocean of pain and it hurts. I just wanted to stop just for a second. I want a break. I can't give you a break. No one can. I know. I raised my hand to stop her. Wait, I wasn't done. Can't give you a break, but when things get too stormy, I can be your anchor. I waited, half uh, expecting her to burst into laughter over the lame sentiment. Or maybe she'd pity me and say thanks as quickly as possible. Her eyes grow wide in disbelief. Why? You don't even know me. I think I know you better than you want me to. I know the question in your head. I've lived them. Lucia freezes. Maybe that scares you? I feel like you know me too. And it's uncomfortable. It fills me with insecurities I didn't even know I had. But I still want to see you again. I want to meet the other pieces of you. I mean... I know your favorite color. Uh, I don't know your favorite colors, your hobbies. But I want to. She doesn't respond. That's a long-winded version of why I'll be there if you call. If you want to see me again. Lucia finally emerges from her silence. I do. But if you're going to know my story, I need to hear more of yours. I could tell you're censoring it. I'm not blind either. When I asked you about the Halloween prosy, you froze. I saw it. Something stole you from the conversation just for a second. You don't need to hide that from me. If I'm going to be vulnerable, can't you be too? I promise I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going anywhere. Will you tell me what happened to you? Oof. Alright. Tell her. Yes. But if you have questions, wait until I'm finished. Lucia nods in agreement. A taste of death. Okay, I can do that. Fair warning. It's a long and messy story. If it's too much for you to hear right now, please stop me. I will if I need to. Alright. I swallow, but the lump in my throat remains. It's uncomfortable aches. Until the day I hadn't felt that months, maybe even years. It's better than feeling nothing, right? I turn my attention back to Lucia. I'm going to think aloud here. 
I become off erratic, that's why. Honestly, I'm ashamed of myself. And that's not typical. I've hated myself. I felt angry, lonely, and stupid. But never ashamed. There was no one around that I cared enough about to feel ashamed. When you started asking questions, you made me reflect for the first time in a while. Despite my declarations of honesty, I can't help but hold back. Vulnerability? It's not my thing. It's exactly why therapy has always been a struggle. I decided to borrow the attitude I had fought so hard to leave behind. Fuck it. Here goes nothing. Four years ago, I went to a Halloween party. Lucia, I was raised quickly as expected. I was home from college that weekend, and I was all, I was so excited to get together with my old friends. We'd all gone to different schools, so it was something we'd been planning for a while. All dressed up together before the crowd arrived. It started out pretty innocently, but a ton of people showed up, and the party got kind of crazy. My friend was hosting, and she didn't mind. Luckily, originally I planned to stay the night, but I ended up drinking way too much, and I needed to go home early. My boyfriend stayed on campus that weekend. So he couldn't give me a ride. I called my dad after midnight and he agreed to come pick me up. He wasn't mad or anything. He was glad that I called and I needed him. I was just having fun and overindulged. He understood. My dad was driving to my friend's place when a teenager in a truck blew through a stop sign and T-boned him. When the emergency service arrived, my dad was still awake. He didn't make it to the hospital. I wait, trying to gauge Lucia's response. She seems okay. I'll keep going. That's uh, a uh, Draco's alt in chat. Good luck, good luck. The kid that caused the accident walked away with superficial scratches. He was lucky in that regard, but mentally he was traumatized. I don't have any ill, Ill, Ill will towards him anymore. He did his best to make amends with my family. Honestly, I hope he can live a normal life. One mistake shouldn't haunt him forever. After my dad died, things with my mom went downhill pretty quickly. I left school to stay home with her. I didn't feel right to leave her all alone. Things fizzled out with my boyfriend because of the distance, so I was dealing with my stuff too. I tried to be there for my mom, but nothing worked. When I spoke to her, she made me feel like I didn't exist. When I tried to tell her about my feelings, she shut me down. She treated suffering like a competition. She said that he was just my dad. She ran on about how we're meant to lose our parents. That he was her husband and that her pain would never end. I barely recognized her. There were even a time when I thought she might kill herself. I didn't know what to do. I was practically still a teenager. It was... I catch, I catch myself holding back, not to push through. It was fucking scary. Lucia purses her lips and nodded sullenly. Her eyes speak in sincere. I'm so sorry, as she possibly can. She stay, <clears throat> oops, but she stays true to her word and doesn't interrupt, sensing that my story isn't complete. Without much of an explanation, she suddenly went on a vacation and never really came back. She moved to the West Coast and got a fresh start. I grit my teeth, forcing myself to say what I've only ever felt before. My mom said that I was always welcome to join her. But now she only offered it because she knew I'd refuse to move. She knew that I wouldn't follow her. Eventually, she ended up hating my dad. I think that was her way of coping. Their marriage wasn't perfect, but she clung to everything that was wrong. He was a uh, shift worker, always rotating from days to nights. I meant that he didn't get to spend much time with us as he could have liked. But I paid for my mom's lifestyle. She always um, had new clothes, a nice car, whatever she asked for him. Hold on, I got a closed door. I know he loved her. He used gifts to try to make up for his schedule. My mom doesn't seem to remember that side of him. I guess it's easier to hate someone rather than mourn for them. She never fails uh, to shit talk him. When we're on the phone, her eyes, her new boyfriend is perfect, and my dad was a human garbage. 
I can't stand to listen to her for too long, so I keep my call short and spaced out. My therapist calls it creating boundaries. It feels like I'm giving up though, because in the end, my mom got what she wanted. My mom's goal was to get rid of me, and she won. Call it a mental breakdown, a midlife crisis, or whatever you want. There's something I've never been able to shake off for years later. As I fight to uh, utter them, the words try to escape me. They're unspeakable, though. Lucia looks up, questioning, and I nod. Ellie, you're safe with me, please. You can say it. I exhale. Every day I wake up thinking I want to go home. But I can't. That part of my life, that door is locked. I shake my head, disagreeing with my statement. No, that's not it. I want to go home, but my mom burned the whole house down. When I think of the part of my life, it's like sifting through a pile of ashes. There's nothing left. I did stupid things trying to numb the pain. My party slept around. I couldn't go a day without smoking. I was always reaching for painkillers too. Ooh, we got the numb trophy. Let's go. I think I convinced myself that he'd quiet the throbbing in my head. House parties, ooh, bitter kisses. Got another one. House parties were too close to, uh, to losing him, so I went to nightclubs instead. I remember dancing in the middle of the neon crowd, feeling more alone than I'd ever thought possible. I was surrounded by people smiling and partying, but there was no happiness. I realized no one was looking for me. I was screaming for help, and no one could hear me. My dad was dead. My mom had a new life. I was completely alone. Those choices were my own, but they were choices my parents would have protected from me. There were days I laid in bed and couldn't pull the blankets off. All I could do was reach for bottles. My own existence was too heavy. It was crushing. I got lucky in the end. My doctor probably saved my life. His office called for an annual checkup and instead of canceling, I felt compelled to go. I didn't tell him much, but he saw the signs and pushed me into treatment. Lucy, I... I'm not the kind of person you should be around. I'm not good. My mom, she... I... Warm tears spilled down my freaking cheeks, like spring rain on forgotten snow. My throat constricted, um, threatening to choke my words into silence. I don't know what I did. I don't know why she left me. I don't know why she stopped loving me. Lucy reached across the table, squeezes my hand. As her fingertip brushes across my skin, her shoulders drop. How does she do that? She has such a subtle presence. Smallest gesture feels like she's wrapped me in a fuzzy blanket. Why? Why do I feel safe telling you this? Lucy's expression softened as she pulls her hand away. Maybe this wasn't an accidental connection. I hastily wipe away the tears with my sleeve, doing my best to compose myself. What do you mean? I never planned to visit the cemetery. My sister wasn't the reason I pulled over. It was because of you. The universe pulled me there and pulled me in magnet I was sent to find you I think we we're meant to meet I don't believe in fate I'm not sure what to say that's a nice thought but I don't really believe in fate why I want to believe that I decided what path I'll take nothing else I spent so much time feeling powerless and weak if I get to decide my purpose it's at least the uh, one thing I have control over. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I'm not done yet. Your sister was so young. My dad was too. I don't think fate uh, made the teenager crash into my dad. I think his own stupid decision did. I made stupid decisions too. Grief pushed me over the edge and I felt let it drive my life for too long. I wanted to write my own story now. Lucia nods and her smile brightens. If fate didn't send me, then I guess I found you all on my own. That's special too. But I have to argue fate's case. I think there was a sign that we were meant to find each other. I just couldn't see it until now. What sign? 
bouquet of blue roses for Kate. They weren't there during her burial, so we'll drop them off afterwards. I don't follow. Well, the thing about blue roses is they're not a typical flower to leave at a grave all on their own. Usually, you have to have an arrangement with uh, all kinds of accents. Roses aren't something Kate liked either, but there's a local tradition behind the blue roses. No one really remembers this kind of stuff anymore, except for the florists in the region. It's a lost tradition. What's the tradition? In folklore, children would leave a single blue flower in the grave of their father. Blue roses became particularly popular because they weren't naturally occurring. The gesture symbolized peace or serenity, depending on who you ask. My grandfather always told me that leaving a blue rose would help a father's spirit move on. Otherwise, they cling to the world to watch over their children. It grants the disease an, accept, uh, an acceptance of their passing and allows their children to grieve. I'm certain that I was meant to find that rose. Your dad was meant to have it. Lucia's word at his graveside echo through my mind. I do have an idea if you want to leave him something meaningful. But that's what she meant. It seems like more of a coincidence than anything. Still, I'm left with questions. I don't get your meaning. Why do you think the rose was fateful? All seems like someone dropped them off after Kate's services. That's all. I think you're wrong. They put those roses there for a reason, regardless of who brought them. You were meant to take part in this tradition for him. I feel frustrations uh, ebb into my voice. Yeah, but why? Why was a question that always haunted me. Why did my dad have to die? Why did my mom leave? Why was everything familiar gone in an instant? Lucia smiles with uh, patience beyond her years as if she was waiting for my realization. Why? Because your dad doesn't need to worry about you being alone anymore. I'm here now. I fumble racing to organize my thoughts. Do you? Do you really mean that? Ellie, that rose was waiting for us. He deserves to be at peace. You're not alone anymore. I'm not going anywhere if you want me around. My tears threatened to overflow, but I craned my neck backwards to stop them. Deep breath in, deep breath out. When I look back at her, I can only bear to whisper my answer. I want, to, uh, I want you to stay. I will. Forget the first time my dad died. I feel a bond, a new connection. I don't want to lose her. I'll keep, uh, you'll keep your promise, right? What did I promise? I grin at her. To text me once you drop me off. Lucy reaches for her phone and begins to tap away at the screen. Is she texting me right now? Grabs suddenly. Oh shoot. We need to go soon. It's getting pretty late. If we stay much longer, you're going to miss the trick or treaters. You got that date with your uh, leftover candy too. As much as I don't want to leave quiet, I don't want to keep Lucia too late. You better go. I don't need a kid's egg in my place. Plus, I don't want to, uh, you missing that party. I think I'll skip out. It's been an interesting day. Well, I hope you find energy to go out. Halloween was, is my favorite holiday. Mine too. And don't worry, I'm going to send you pictures of my costume. I'm sure you'll love them. I can't help but bite my, my lip. Looking forward to it. Lucia waves towards the waitress. Can we get a bill, please? I'll get it right away. The waitress glances towards our untouched plates. I'm sorry, was there something wrong with the cheesecake? No, no. We're in a bit of a rush, that's all. We get takeout boxes, please? Of course. Thanks for coming, happy Halloween. With the pay, uh, bill paid, we cross the street and head to Lucia's car. I focus on giving Lucia directions to my neighborhood. But I can't help feel eager to get a box of Halloween decorations dusted off and onto my doorstep. I'm at number 235. Right here? Yeah, that's my place. She pulls over and parks the car. As the engine switches off, I can't help but wonder what she's up to. I thought she'd just drop me off. Let me walk you to your front door. Yo, what up, bro? Yep, early stream. Let's go. You don't have to do that. She giggles softly. Of course I do. This place is crawling with monsters. Ah, 
Uh, little superheroes, princesses, and ghouls begin to trickle out into the streets, passing by houses without porch lights. I hurry up and step and unlock my door. Spooky streets? As I turn my key, I feel Lucia's eyes on my back. What? No goodbye? I stick out my tongue. Don't act so weird. <laughs> I'm not ditching you just yet. I look back and pop open the door. Hit the light switch and watch uh, the dim orange glows flicker on. It looks like uh, you get plenty of kids on this street. Oh yeah, I rarely have leftover candy. Uh, I swear to God, you play the most random ass games I never knew existed. <laughs> I got these uh, keys, free keys, so I'm uh, doing a stream for them. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's free. Free to free. Can't complain. Oh yeah, I really have leftover candy. Oh, that's too bad. I would have liked to steal some. You're lucky then. Why is that? I have a stash just for myself, and I might be willing to share. Doesn't that mean you'd have to make plans to see me again? I guess so. Lucia steps closer. I can smell the faint remnant of a pumpkin and express aroma swirling around her. Her gaze drifts onward from my eyes and uh, traces my lips. I like that. Is she? Boo. <laughs> An eruption of laughter echoes from across the street. A group of trick-or-treaters were trying to scare their friends. Lucy adjusts the straps of her purse, clearly flustered. I, um, I've been thinking about our next date. I can't help but smile when she says date. You have? Yep. Maybe we could do something casual. Coffee wasn't casual. I meant the topics. I'd love to know your favorite music is, or what your childhood pets were like. I want to know more about you. My heart uh, beat quickens. I like where you're going with that. I can do simple. As long as you spill some details, too. I want to hear all about your past. Explosive adventures, anything. Lucia begins to fidget again, this time with her necklace. Well, you won't have to worry about boyfriends. She seemed anxious about the admission. What a relief. No uh, competition. <laughs> I try my best to make her laugh, but all I get is a grin. Worth it. You like horror movies? Uh, yes. A Muna in chat. Let's go, let's go. Although I'm uh, more into ghost stories, slashers aren't my thing. All right. Uh, did you want to come over tomorrow night? We can eat candy and watch a haunted house film. Her eyes light up. I'd love to. Great. That's a plan. Although I do have one question for you. What is it? Do I expect flowers? Always. <laughs> I guess I better buy a vase. Don't be silly. I can bring one. Lucia reaches into her purse and taps on her phone. Getting late. I think I should head home. There's nothing else I wanted to say before you go. Okay. It's that if you do change your mind about us, seeing each other again, it's okay. Why do you say that? Because meeting you was a blessing either way. You? you made me see myself so clearly. I used to think that I'd never get uh, made a step forward. That my grief hadn't changed. Today... You were a mirror into my past. I could finally say that I've been doing whatever I needed to. I'm growing. So blue roses and fate aside. You lost your sister this week. I'd rather you lean on me and not the other way around. I also want you to take as much time as you need before you see each other again. If you wake up tomorrow and can't get out of bed, that's natural. I'm not in a rush. I'll wait for when you're ready to spend time together. Put yourself first. Lucia nods. Thank you for saying that. But just so you know, you can't get out of our date that easy. I expect chocolate bars and lollipop <laughs> and lollipops tomorrow night. You're in big trouble. Good to know. I'll be ready. Lucia bites her bottom of her lip adamantly. I'm glad that I found you today. Can't wait for you to get, uh, get I can't wait to get to know you better. Lucia nods inches close to me. Good night, Ellie. Oh no. Lucia wraps her arms around me in a warm embrace. A new friend. I think you're an amazing person. Thank you for today. I smile. No, thank you. I'm glad you found me, Lucia. I squeeze her tight. Good night. Lead the villa rare. All right. Looks like we did it, boys. Looks like we did it.
All right. I love the art style. I wish they had more um, scenes, right? Obviously, it's a rattle like a game. They're cheap, so I, I can see why they didn't, but it would have been so much better if they had uh, done that. So it is what it is. Oh. Ah, uh, instead of angry words, anxious dreams, or some dark cravings, there's only one thing on my mind. One person. I imagine you're in the room next to me. What would that be like? Maybe I'll make her pancakes. We could sit down for breakfast and chat the morning away. I bet she'd love coffee. Fantasy worms. Uh, the forgotten ice in my heart. Despite being alone, I wanted to say it. Good morning, Lucia. I'll see you soon. It's a promise to myself. One I intend to keep. And there we go. So, going through this, uh, you know, we didn't get the platinum, um, which is fine. Uh, we're going to get that real quick. But in here, we got most of the, the things... We it, it, threw at it. We just had to get the city, right? So we got to go through just one part and we have to tell her to, to stay positive and let's, uh, let's get that going. So go options. Um, start memories. Yes, I wish to continue. And we're supposed to skip it again. And this is where we have to choose stay positive instead of talk about mom. So let's see what this says. It looks someone brought flowers. That was thoughtful. Hard to guess? I'd say it was Aunt Cora. She misses you. She tried so hard to be there for mom after your accident. Nope, that's too much. I clear my throat and try to refocus on lighter thoughts. I guess I should actually give you an update on my life. You'll be happy to hear that I finished college. Just going to leave the part out where I nearly failed a dozen times. I study tourism and hospitality. It seems interesting enough. I got a job in the field too. I work at the front desk of Spring Dream Suites. It's a starter job. I won't be there forever. Famous last words. I'd love to work at a resort in the uh, tropics someday. Living on the island would be dreamy. I rub my hands together distractedly, feeling a frosty nip at my fingertips. Anywhere, anywhere warmer, than that would be fine. I feel at a loss for what I'd say next. I end things with... Never mind, that's in the past. I didn't know him that well anyways. Exhale. Platinum should pop here. I don't know what else to tell you. There are parts of my life that I wouldn't feel right about sharing. I'm holding back the negative side. It's not that I need to focus on. But I didn't realize how little good news I have. Sorry, there's one more trophy. Then it's going to pop. Yeah. I'm trying to keep moving forward, but I feel like I'm all... <clears throat> I feel... I'm trying to move forward, but I feel like I'm all talk. I made a lot of shitty choices, and I'm trying to leave them behind. I'm still making those choices even when I try not to. I know I can't pretend like they never happened, but handling conversations about mistakes isn't something I'm practiced at. A smirk pulls at the edge of my lips, even if they were on one side of conversation. I know I don't get uh, don't get excuses either, but no one should get to prepare for the sudden goodbyes. Anyways, I've been writing quite a lot, actually, almost daily. Oh, there we go. Trophy pop. Platinum, boys. There we go. Heck yeah. It's a pure thing. Feeling my feeling. Help me feel detached from less heavy. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. 
it's uh, pretty much just a talk, so we're not going to read this anymore. But we got that Platinum, and that was not bad. For a Rata Laika game, I am happy with the story. You guys did a great job. Um, the price for Easy Platinum, highly recommend it. So until next time, I appreciate you guys at YouTube. Um, but I'll get this out there. And again, if you guys ever want to see me live on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash sexor99. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.